The top Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee believes his Republican colleagues are setting up Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein to be punished. The Washington Post reports that Trump allies Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan met with Rosenstein on Monday to press him for more documents concerning the Russia probe and the Clinton email investigation. And the White House could be in the loop. Three sources told the Post that President Trump and Meadows spoke at some point after the meeting but they declined to share details of that exchange. Citing a potential investigation and other classifications, DOJ said yesterday it needs more time to evaluate House Republicans' request for James Comey's memos about meetings with President Trump. The chairman of the Judiciary Committee is poised to issue a subpoena for the documents. That's according to ranking Democrat Jerry Nadler. Nadler said he believes DOJ cannot meet the Republicans' demands, adding, quote, I fear the majority will have manufactured an excuse to hold the Deputy Attorney General in contempt of Congress. In yesterday's joint news conference with the Japanese Prime Minister, President Trump repeated some of his debunked claims about the probe and said he's been restrained toward the investigators. On the Mueller probe, have you concluded that it's not worth the political fallout to remove either Special Counsel Mueller or Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein? We are uh, giving tremendous amounts of paper this was a, uh, really a hoax created largely by the Democrats as a way of uh, softening the blow of a loss, which is a loss that, frankly, they shouldn't have had from the standpoint that it's very easy for them. They have a tremendous advantage in the Electoral College, and this is what it is, and this is where it came from. Uh, you look at the kind of money that was paid. Probably some went to Russia. You look at Podesta having a company in Russia where nothing happened and people don't talk about it. You look at the fact that their server, the DNC server, was never gotten by the FBI. Why did the FBI take it? The FBI takes what they want. They go in, they wouldn't get the server. This is a hoax. As far as the investigation, nobody has ever been more transparent than I have instructed our lawyers. Be totally transparent. I believe we've given them 1.4 million pages of documents, if you can believe this, and haven't used, that I know of, or for the most part, presidential powers or privilege. So we are hopefully coming to the end. It, it is a bad thing for our country, very, very bad thing for our country. But there has been no collusion. They won't find any collusion. It doesn't exist. Uh, as far as uh, the two gentlemen you told me about, uh, they've been saying, I'm going to get rid of them for the last three months, four months, five months, and uh, they're still here. So we want to get the investigation over with, done with, put it behind us. So he's talking there, Casey, about Bob Mueller and Rod Rosenstein. There are a lot of people suspicious now and wondering, especially yesterday, what Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan are up to in, when it comes to Rob Rosenstein. Are they trying to put him into a place where they could hold him somehow in contempt of Congress and maybe push him to the side? That's the question. And I, I think that this effort has sort of been spreading through the Republican conference. So Devin Nunes has been the president's kind of primary ally in trying to fight back against this behind the scenes. And the fact that you've had a couple other uh, chairmen, uh, notably the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, Jerry Nadler, warning perhaps they will subpoena these documents. Uh, it sends a signal that, you know, frankly, House Republican leaders who have said repeatedly publicly, the speaker has said this, that they want Mueller to be able to finish their investigation, are to a certain extent losing control of the situation. That uh, that this is kind of uh, snowballing in a way that could basically provide the president an excuse uh, to fire these people and, and potentially precipitate a constitutional crisis. We've wondered for a long time on this show, Josh, where the people who claim the president would never fire Bob Mueller are getting the confidence to say that. Mitch McConnell standing in the way of legislation yeah. that could protect the special counsel um, because he says it's just not something the president would do. I think they probably thought that about James Comey as well. I'm sure they thought that about James Comey. I know about they Jim thought Comey, that about James right? Comey. I mean, look, people who are willing to take the president's word for something this important are either foolish or cowardly. They either are, are, are in the face of all evidence to the contrary, are willing to trust a guy who has shown he can't be trusted, or they're unwilling to stand up to him. And it is... Uh, it's problematic when we're talking about something as fundamental to our Constitution as the rule of law. So I, I don't want to be overly dramatic about it, but what we are seeing from congressional Republicans is the continued march of politicizing our, uh, our justice system in a way that 
is should be troubling to Americans of all political persuasion. And there is bipartisan legislation on this. Tom Tillis, others have gotten together with Democrats and said, we've got to protect the special counsel. Yeah, and there was enough alarm. And I would, I think I would put it to, and again, with the news cycles the way they are, I lose track of time, but I think it was last Friday <laughs> that there were a lot of rumors that Rosenstein was on the verge of being fired. Right. And Republicans made a significant push in the Judiciary Committee to put this legislation uh, through the committee. Mitch McConnell kind of put the kibosh on it by going out in public and saying, no way, no how am I putting this on the floor? But and one question, and at least, Jordan, I'm curious your take on this. I think one thing that, that Republicans are hoping is true is that the president learned his lesson from firing James Comey and that that backfired on him so aggressively, gave him Mueller, that that argument is convincing him that he shouldn't make the same mistake again. That's normal logic. <laughs> but I think it's fantasy land when you're dealing with Donald Trump and his level of impulsivity. And if there's anything that Donald Trump loves to do, it's to do exactly what everyone says he can't do, which is why I still think there's a significant risk that he is actually going to fire Mueller. McConnell's comments and his posture on the legislation and not letting it go to the floor is interesting to me, and it really contrasts with how he has let the Senate Intel Committee proceed with their investigation. Well, and I also think it's it's potentially contradictory to where his conference is, and I think that's going to be one of the more interesting dynamics to that to play out because you come out of these they have policy lunches every Tuesday. These Republicans come out and you hear there's a significant amount of angst about this. Well, yeah, and look at all of these. Primary season is about to be over, and they're going to have to run a lot of Republicans. Well, I mean, only eight, but still, you know, they have to defend their seats, right. and they're going to have to run as general election candidates. And so you look at where the tide of the country is, and I think McConnell is frankly out of step with where the electorate is. You, you know, at, at some point, someday, this is going to end. This is going to be over. This investigation is going to be over. There's really? going to be a conclusion. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so at some point, someday, someday it will happen. But the largest danger is not existent in Washington today. It's existent out in the country where all of this coming at people every day like a fire hose of events and scandals and <clears throat> shocking statements happens every day, repeatedly during the course of the day, has, I think, many, many people anesthetized to the shock of what is happening to our constitutional system of government on a daily basis. Well, I think what I hear a lot out there is, call me when it's over. I'm, you're, I'm yeah. hearing every yes. twist and turn of the Russia investigation. Let me know what happens at the end of the movie. We're talking about senators describing whether or not they think that Donald Trump might try to find a way to get rid of Bob Mueller. Here's Senator Orrin Hatch speaking yesterday about that. Should no, it be I don't think so, and I don't think anybody's going to, uh, I don't think the president's going to be so stupid as to do something like that. That's good enough for you, just the idea that the president wouldn't do this, so we don't need to pass it? Well, that's right, and, and we ought to let the president be the president, but uh, I don't think he's about to do that. He would, he would take such criticism that it wouldn't be worth it to him. Is that the prevailing opinion in the Senate among Republicans, Casey? I don't know that it's, it's certainly the prevailing uh, public view. I think privately, there's enormous concern. I mean, and, and, and Bob Corker, I, I'm not sure we've, we've heard from him yet. I hope we will show some of what he said yesterday, uh, because he's essentially like, look, if you're a Republican senator and you don't think this whole thing is off the rails, at least to, to some degree, you're not paying any attention. But help people at home understand that. Why would they say that to you privately and then go out in front of cameras and say something entirely different? So part of it, well, a couple things. One, they all have to run for re-election in their bases with Trump. So that's an underlying dynamic. But two, the smart ones, and, and Orrin Hatch flipped this on his head, uh, some of the, the, the people of closer relationships with President Trump, they would go on TV and say the president is too smart to fire Mueller because they don't want him to, but they know that flattery can get you to a certain place with this president. So when you see Republicans coming out and saying, oh, our president is way too smart to possibly do anything such as that, that's what they're, they're trying to send him a message. Hey, don't do that. Lead with flattery yeah. always works with this president. Still ahead on Morning Joe, a former Playboy model is now allowed to speak out. Karen McDougal reached a deal with the owners of the National Enquirer, allowing her to discuss her alleged affair with Donald Trump. Talk about the potential significance of that agreement and speak to her attorney ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.